don't worry, everybody. Don't sound the alarm bells. This is all a big April Fool's Day prank. The Blue Jays didn't get no hit today. No chance. Happy April Fool's. The Jays actually won a million to one. But just just joking. This is this is horrible. We're gonna break it all down, I guess, right away. You are locked on Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays, everybody. Uh, you know, just some a little bit of housekeeping things. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, Braden Five, Wasco Carter first too. We are here with Blue Jays updates constantly year round. We're here. We put out you know videos on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube Reels, YouTube, anywhere you listen to podcasts. You guys can follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Locked on Blue Jays, and a lot of we've noticed a lot of you guys aren't subscribed, like eighty five percent or eighty percent. Uh, so drop the subscribe for us. It helps us out a ton. It puts our content right at the top of your page. You guys are all aware of what Blue Jays news is going on. Um, and yeah, it was a tough one today. The Blue Jays, Blanco just absolutely rained down hell on the Blue Jays today, beating us 10 nothing. We get no hit. We were actually lucky, thank God, to George Springer for getting walked twice because otherwise it would have been a perfect game. This was just, just horrible. And... I think fifth inning came around. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a no hitter. That's I was watching the game and I'm like, nobody looks like they have anything. Um, Carter, I don't know. I'm going to throw it to you. What what is your overall just like? Are you in depression mode with me now, or where are you at? Not a lot of positives you can take from that game. I was just uh, I was looking at something, some sort of spin zone that I could get going for this game, and the only thing I could think of is yeah, it's April Fools. Uh, the Jays just uh, they wanted to play a little bit of a joke on us. They wanted uh, oh yeah, we're not, we're like the twenty twenty three Jays. We can't get hit. We're gonna get no hit the fifth game of the year. They're, no, they're gonna after this they're gonna fly that back out. They're gonna score nine more runs tomorrow. Just uh, an April Fool's fool joke by the Toronto Blue Jays. A pretty sick joke at that because why did we have to watch this? This was a complete waste of time. The best thing that happened this game is that IKF had a scoreless inning of pitching. I think that's probably the only good thing that I could get out of this game. Seven pitches, an inning pitched, no runs given up, surprisingly. So uh, kudos to IKF, I guess. I have I have nothing good to say about this game. Not not one good thing. Bound Francis looked bad. Henny Cabrera, I guess you could throw him. He's going to get suspended. So at least he ate up an inning. Uh, that's, yeah, that's all I got. Not not a horrible game. That, that's no, I, I'll, I'll go over Bowden Francis stat line. It's not not good. Uh, five and a third innings pitched. He uh, ten hits given up. Seven runs. Seven earned runs. Seven strikeouts, which he was getting swing and miss. So like that's nice. But and and to be fair, on some of those home run pitches, they weren't horrible pitches. I think the one was I can't remember who it was on, but was like a, a high outside pit or inside pitch that he just turned on. So I mean. It, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but he left a lot of pitches over the middle as well. So can't really, you know, I can't let him off the hook too much. He gave up one walk, three home runs. Uh, he, he The ERA that game, 11-8-1. It's just not good. It's just not good. Springer, two walks. Everybody else, bad. It was just bad. It, I have, I honestly don't really have a ton of words. It's just, I was just getting frustrated. And if you guys saw the TikTok we posted last night, um, that was my honest thoughts. I was like, okay, you know, it's all bad. It's not, nothing's good. It's all bad. And that's what it was today. I, I honestly, I, I was debating just turning the game off, but you know, I'm, I'm committed to the, the Blue Jays podcast. And even if I'm mad, I want to watch the game through, um, which was a stupid decision by me because I'm a stupid person. And I decided to watch all nine innings of a Blue Jays game that we didn't hit, get a single hit in. I don't know, Carter. I, I really, I don't really don't know. I don't know what the the problem was. Maybe John Schneider. I saw him put out something that said it was just a you know an off day. We know you know that we're better than this. I don't know if if we can consider this an off day. Three of our five games, we can't hit the baseball. I don't one know. Thing, one thing that I just don't understand is that. There seems to be like some backup plans put in for a lot of Toronto Blue Jays things. When you look at this third base position, you have a million options for def- defensively. You get that IKF there. That whole signing for me is a safety net. If this isn't going to work out, if Vigio doesn't have a good year, Ernie Clement obviously wasn't foreseen. 
didn't really have a third base option. Worst case scenario, we had IKF. We knew he was going to play defense. When you look at the starting pitching rotation, worst case scenario, you had Alec Manoa. It's already happened, worst case scenario, in my opinion. You have Bowden Francis. Not a great day from him. I'm not too worried about the Bowden Francis stuff. It's his first uh, big league start in a long time. I'm, it's a good yeah. Astros lineup. Yeah. They're pissed off against uh, – that's what makes it suck even more, in my opinion, is that they just got uh, swept by the Yankees. The Yankees absolutely destroyed them, and now the Blue Jays come in, and they get no hit by the Astros' fifth starter in Blanco. But there's a backup plan, like back to what I, my original thought here. Backup plan for starting pitching. You have Mitch White. You have Paulo Espino. When you look at this lineup for the last two seasons, and you see it especially today, Bo Bichette's out, there's nothing here. You get to four, and you have Dalton Varsho hitting. Like I said, I, I love Dalton Varsho. I think he's going to have a bounce back year. But is Dalton Varsho good enough to hit four? I, I don't think so whatsoever. Dalton Varsho hitting five might even be a little bit high for me. You look at Bo Pichette being out. You have George Springer, Vladdy, Justin Turner. Who else do you really have? You don't have anyone that's been proven. You don't have any backup plan. You have one injury, and this lineup gets very weak. It's very thin. There's not a lot of depth at all. And I just don't understand why Ross Atkins can't address this in the offseason. I didn't want to get, I don't want to get too negative here because it is only the fifth game of the season, but this has been a problem. We had all of last season. We had guys not hitting. You think you would bring in more than one person to help this order out, at least have a backup plan, have some people that if you're not going to get these productions, you're not going to have this bounce back year. You have somebody to rely on. And it doesn't seem like Ross Atkins ever gives the Blue Jays just a chance with this lineup. I 100% agree. They're, they're, we talked about this. We said they needed to bring in more bats this offseason. We we went over and over and over about free agents that are possibilities. And and you know, they, they started talking about Joey Votto a little bit. He's you know, he's take he's making or he's taking defensive reps right now. So that's good to see. Maybe we can slide him in somewhere to get an extra bat. I don't even know what you do with him though, because you want to keep Turner in the lineup. You want to keep Vladdy in the lineup. So what do you do? I don't know. We need some we might need some help. We'll see how the season keeps going. I mean, like you said, it is only game five, and we can see sort of what happens in the next few weeks. Um, but another sort of thing that that pissed me off today was that IKF was in. Don't get me wrong. He didn't have a terrible day at the plate, but you want more offensive production because we haven't had a hit all game, and we don't put in Davis Schneider until it's too late and it doesn't matter and whatever. Like, maybe throw him in, see if he can change the tides, get a big hit, spark something. At least give him an at bat. Like it's just it's it's just ridiculous. And I don't know. Maybe they just thought, hey, we don't want to put this guy in to then go in and have the same thing happen and ruin his confidence as well. But I mean, you just got no hit. Try something, anything. Like yeah, I mean, at this point, you might as well call up uh, the Florida Complex League and try to get somebody from there. Maybe they can get a hit for this Toronto Blue Jays team that looks just lost at the plate the entire day. And with Ronald Blanco, like he's not a horrible pitcher, but he's topping out at 95. And that's another thing that as a fan just watching, it always sucks more when you're just getting carved up by a dude that's not even really chucking too hard. So it's kind of sucked as a fan perspective. But yeah, like you said, you might as well just see what sticks at this point. You're through six, seven innings. You don't have a hit. You don't really even have any competitive at-bats other than George Springer, I guess you could say, with his two walks. Sure. But still, like two walks, it's not going to get it done, obviously. You're going to need some hits. IKF, we've been saying it all off season. A guy that probably going to get a little bit too much flack on this podcast for what he does. We know who IKF is. We knew what he was brought in to do. It's just some more of a Ross Atkins thing. It's that yeah. IKF was never really the problem solver at the end of the day anyway because he does offer a limited offensive upside. You're going to get the defense out of him. But it doesn't matter when you're not going to get a hit in a baseball game. Mind you, our pitching was not good today. The whole thing just kind of blew up in our face. The yeah. bullpen wasn't good. Nothing really worked out today. But with a, something that was such a huge problem last season, it just it's tough to get excited as a fan when there's very minimal being done to address huge outliers on our team from season to season. Yeah, and I mean it's it, it is it's just it's frustrating. I was I was sitting here just frustrated the whole time. I. Because we know we knew that there was free agents out there that could have helped this team, right? You could have went and got Cody Bellinger. You could have went, you know, like there's there's tons of guys. We went over every single one of them this offseason of who this Jays team could have went out and got that would have helped their bats. But nope, they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it. And, and now it's biting us a little bit because you look at guys that have, you know, played on this team and left and are doing well, having really good seasons already. I mean, even look at, I hate to say it, but look at Matt Chapman. He's, he's playing very well. Uh, Teoscar just hit another bomb again. Like, uh, you know, there's lots of guys on the, that, you know, 
Lord, Lord Scurriel had three home runs in his yeah. first three games. So when you're when you're looking at these ex Toronto Blue Jays to the Blue Jays that are on the team right now, other than Justin Turner, you get obviously that amazing game in uh, game number four there. But you're looking at the rest of these games and you're not seeing offensive production again. Yeah. So it's it's tough when you went through an entire 162 game season last year with not enough offense, not enough offense. And then you're looking in the fifth game of the season, and in the most Toronto Blue Jays fashion ever, they are the first team of the 2024 season to be no hit. And it's not even like this is a Cy Young perennial guy that's there every single year in the voting. He's not a nobody, but he's not Garrett Cole. He's not Sonny Gray. He's not Tyreek Skubal. He's not any of these guys that are going to be in the Cy Young voting this season. So yeah. when you're looking at this in the first week of the season, it's tough not to re- overreact, overreact about this lineup when they've shown time and time again that they lack offensive production. Yeah, uh, you know what? I want to get into some. I got a few texts today after the game just from some big fans that uh, were tuning in. So I want to just you know sort of mention some of their comments as well. Um, leave your guys' comments down below. What you thought about this game? What do you think could honestly help us at this point? Do you think they're do you, are you at the point where you're overreacting and you think there needs to be a move made? Do you think that they need to start looking for some other options? Do you think Davis needs to get in the lineup more? What are your guys' thoughts? Let us know. Uh, we're going to talk about some text, some other stuff throughout the game uh, coming up right after this. Today's episode brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies, TV shows, and episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or college basketball tournaments, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On. Of course, you know, it's it's always fun to see us. I know we throw uh, for the Fire TV on just to keep up with some of the other teams. And, you know, we're Canucks fans, Jets fans, uh, and, other, and you know, throughout other leagues. So we'll throw on a Locked On on the, on the uh, Fire TV channels as well. It's, it's a ton of fun to keep up with. Um, and you can uh, view also the big pro sports leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, and as I always say, cooking videos, because uh, I find that just hilarious. Uh, Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa device. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. So I just got a couple of texts, Carter. I'm going to read a few of them off just because, uh, you know, I just think it's hilarious when people it's it's awesome that people reach out to us, I think, knowing that we're Blue Jays guys and we run the podcast. And I think it's so, so it is nice to get other people's perspectives on the game. But I think this one's pretty difficult to have different perspectives on. Uh, Skylar Peters, as you know, always uh, will join us uh, here and there. Uh, our buddy, super fan gambler uh he says just left work saw the score jesus christ uh i also got a text message dylan half who uh huge blue jays fan keeps up pretty consistently with the team uh he goes uh jesus the jays atkins shapiro what's going on what do we need to do love it uh so just a couple of them as well as uh, we've seen a couple of your guys' comments on the TikToks and uh, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, whatever. You guys can follow us on that Instagram reels at Locked On Jays as uh, we try to keep up to date with, you know, a video or two a day that we just create or find interesting. We'll just, you know, have fun with it sort of. That'll be a sort of that that and the TikTok will be sort of our fun information, game recaps, everything like that. So, uh, yeah, keep up to date. Make sure you guys drop a sub as well. Carter. To continue on with the, the the snooze fest that was today's game, um, yeah, I don't know. Any more feelings just about the whole situation in general before we maybe get into a little bit more specifics? Yeah, nothing nothing in totality. I mean, I think we kind of went over the uh, the big moments in the game because there really weren't any. Uh, the Jays didn't get a hit. Uh, George Springer walked twice. Thanks to George Springer for not completely embarrassing the fan base. On uh, opening week, I guess no hitter is better than a perfect game. Other than other than that, no, there's not really much I have in uh, overall. But I do want to get into Bowden Francis here because yeah. in for the Bowden Francis stuff, it's 
he had a tough game. Like just looking at uh, watching some of the home runs he gave up. Yeah, there were a few. I know he was throwing some uh, some breaking pitches right over the middle that got absolutely smacked. But there were a couple of uh, doubles off the wall. I know Jeremy Pena had a double. It was off an inside pitch. I thought it was actually a really good pitch. Just got yeah. to it. A couple yeah. other hits. This is a good Astros lineup as well. Like This is no team to scoff at. I know they just got swept by the Yankees, but they still have Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Jeremy Pena. So many good players on this team. And obviously their pitching is nothing to laugh about either. This is a good team. They played a good team in the Yankees, got swept. It is what it is. Don Francis, you do want to see more success out of him. Like you uh, referenced before, Braden, he did have seven strikeouts. So there is some positives there. Was oh, attacking the strike zone. Quick, funny little thing. Three of those strikeouts were against Bregman which I find hilarious. Three in a row strikeouts against Bregman. I will take that any day of the week. So, yeah, so Bregman, uh, your team gets 10 runs, but you can't uh, figure out Bowden Francis. So there you go. I mean, Bowden Francis has already got uh, Alex Bregman figured out. So that's something we got to keep in our uh, back pocket for uh, later games when we play the Astros. Yeah, it didn't walk many people either. Just, uh, it's, I don't know, it didn't have his best stuff today. They were hitting good pitches. It is, it is what it is. Bowden Francis, it didn't matter if he went, uh, no hitter as well by himself he would have got a no decision again today anyway so again i'm more worried about this hitting lineup and our lack of offensive production based off of last season as well i mean this season we've gotten a few big uh big games eight runs nine runs but i much rather have four or five runs a game than have a game where we score nine runs and then a game where we get no hit especially yeah. when you're playing the astros a team that's going to be in playoff contention these games obviously do end up mattering because we're always battling in the playoffs with them. It comes down to tiebreakers. You want to win these games early on. It's going to get even harder down the stretch as you get closer to playoff baseball. So unfortunate loss. Hopefully the Jays can bounce back tomorrow with Jose Brios on the mound, but it doesn't get any easier with Framer Valdez. Braden, I'm not sure if you have anything else to add, but uh, I think this is one of those games he's going to have to put behind you. There's not much, there's not much else to say. Yeah, I mean, I... I don't know. We I sort of called that they were going to probably lose this game. Not I didn't think in any world that it was going to be a no-hitter, obviously. Um, and they've got another tough test tomorrow, like you said. So it, the guys need to figure it out, hopefully get a good sleep in tonight and and try to come out strong. But no, Bowden, I, I think you can't put too much on the kid. It's, it's all so brutal when you give up three runs and, and then your batters go up and don't do anything to help you out. And it's just, it's, it's a mindset thing when you think, Oh my goodness, we're all, we've already lost this game. I'm already done. Um, it's, it's tough. And, and yeah, he was pitching. Okay. I thought some of the, yeah, like you said, some of the pitches were in good spots and they were still driving them. So it just wasn't our day. Uh, tough start for Bowden, but I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping the second start that he gets will be better. Um, I think he needs it to be just for confidence. Why we don't need to see another Alec Manoa situation. And that's a little bit on our hitters. They got to do something so that we can't, we can't have two pitchers that we need to be good. Uh, you know, their confidence gets shot because they're not, because our team's not scoring any runs and they get the loss. So we can't have that happen. Uh, Carter, I guess, uh, you know what, we're going to take a quick break here, but then we got a, a, a bit of stuff to get into just for tomorrow's game. And then a couple other just tidbits of information for you guys as well. Uh, so we'll do that right but, after uh, this break. Just, just before we do head to this break, oh. though, I wanted to throw it to our Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. As we say every week, pretty much every episode, with March Badness, NHL playoffs coming up, the NBA playoffs are uh, getting close as well. Obviously, MLB teams, if you're a fan of another MLB team that uh, our experts over on the Locked On channel work, will cover more thoroughly. Perfect opportunity to go over there. So let's go to the Locked On Sports Today channel on YouTube and subscribe to our first ever Nashville 24-7 streaming channel. You think we have, sort of have an outline where, we, where we're going to say these uh, streaming channel stuff. And every time, I swear, it's just one of these right over my head. I, and then you got to jump in. I, I appreciate that, though. Well, hey, we just get into it sometimes. I try to remember, but sometimes even, hey, if we get too involved, the emotions get a little bit too high. Uh, we do forget some things sometimes. So I like to remind the fans or in the, the people watching all the time that it's a perfect opportunity. Like we always talk about on this podcast, we don't know anything about basketball, the March Madness brackets. You might as well not know anything and just hey. guess because it's probably better than us actually watching the game and trying to figure it out ourselves anyway. I think I got Purdue all the way to the final, so hopefully we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm a little basketball guru here. But uh, we'll go back into the Jays talk uh, coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, of course. I love FanDuel. One of their biggest – I'm probably funding their whole operation at this point. 
Uh, the sports calendar is loaded and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Carter, uh, you know what? We're going to get into one more thing coming out, but I owe you 20 bucks. You were able to get the defeat on me in fantasy. So I hope that uh, I think we're going to send that money to your FanDuel account. So we'll get you all logged in, ready to go. And I think next episode we'll bring some bets uh, for everybody to take a look at, see what you're riding with. Are you going to throw all the twenty down, or are you going to sort of split it up in the five dollar bets so you can maybe get that bonus? Oh, I'm going, I'm going all in with the twenty. I actually have my bet slip made for tomorrow, so uh, we'll I'll let you finish this ad breaker right after this ad. I'll get into my uh, my bet slip quick. Very cool. Visit FanDuel.com/slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, so for those of you who don't know and missed our episode, me and Carter were playing in the finals of our NHL Fantasy Hockey League. Uh, Carter was able to edge out a victory on me. I did win my my uh, work league, um, so I'll take that win. Sam Brownell just couldn't match up against my team. But uh, I had an unfortunate sort of start to my NHL or end to my NHL week as Jack Eichel got a five-minute five game misconduct, which is – 15 minutes of penalties. He was minus six points on the day, which was terrible. Then a Austin controversial Matthews. call as well. I mean, yes. that's something we, we we're not going to get into too much, but yeah. I they did not uh, help you out too much with that it steering, was, uh, match penalty you got. It was ridiculous, but whatever. I thought, okay, whatever. The boys will bounce back. Austin Matthews had an oh, decent enough day. He would have, it, it would have made it everything a lot tighter. And then he gets minus uh, five points as well on a like third period line brawl sort of. So, I got screwed. Um, my Canucks couldn't put together a ton of points. It was a 3 2 uh, victory over Anaheim. Not what I needed. I either need, I needed like a 10 to 3 game with like a Besser Miller hat trick. Didn't go my way. Carter, congratulations. So you get 20 bucks to go and use on FanDuel. So uh, we said at the beginning that that was our bet. Either if I won, I would have $20 to go and use on prize picks because I haven't signed up yet. Or if Carter won, he hadn't signed up for FanDuel yet. So he'd get 20 bucks to go and sign up for FanDuel. So we're going to get Carter onto FanDuel, and he's got his bet slip for tomorrow ready to go, or for today, I guess, uh, ready to go. Carter, what do you got for your $20 bet? Yeah, I don't even have the uh, the money in my account yet, but I already took uh, the uh, the time to look at uh, this FanDuel account here, and I do have a bet slip. I'm going all in, and of course, I have to bet with my Toronto Blue Jays guys because who, I mean, what gives you more confidence after a 10 nothing no hit to bet yeah. on a Blue Jays win, right? So have to. We're uh, we're hammering the Blue Jays. I am going to go under in the, this game. It's uh it's a good pitching matchup. You got Jose Barrios versus Framer Valdez. Obviously, if the Jays can't get a hit against Blanco, I don't know how much better they're going to fare against Valdez. But I do have the under going at 8.5 runs. Obviously, the Jays win, so I bet on that money line as well. Hammering a Vladdy home run. I think Vladdy. Big home run, need a bounce back. Hopefully in the first inning, gets uh, the Jays on the board early, can actually figure out how to score some runs, maybe gets the boys fired up. And then I do have a Davis Schneider strikeout because I think he's just, he's going to be in the lineup against the lefty. That's my only negative bet against the Blue Jays, but I also have Davis Schneider over bases at 0.5. So I think it's nice. going to be the Davis Schneider special where he probably strikes out one or two times, but I'm assuming he's going to have a hard hit single or maybe he's going to hit a gap today. I don't know about the home run necessarily, I think yeah. he is going to get on base. So that is my bet. I guess there's five legs there. So I'll just go over it one more time quick. Under 8.5 rounds, the Jays win, flatty home run, a Schneider strikeout, and Schneider over 0.5 bases. What's the uh, what's the multiplier on that? The multiplier is plus 820. So wow. Wow. We got, we got a little bit going on that. but uh, Okay. Maybe I'll have to ride with you tomorrow. Maybe I'll ride with you and we'll watch the game. I guess uh, I'm not sure if you have class uh, with the whole cyber that's, strike going on. So. I, I got the class, uh, unfortunately, Tuesday night. So that's why I, I didn't get to watch the game in totality today, which good thing because uh, I didn't, didn't seem like I missed too much. But I did watch the highlights. I did kind of see what Bowden Francis did out there. But like I said, I think uh, with all this, we can kind of leave this game and uh, this Astros narrative in the past. And hopefully Jose Brios can. Uh, and I think Blue Jays fans are probably going to be OK with moving on after the demolishing that we undertook today. Yeah. And you know what? Looking at tomorrow's game, I think you brought up the, the fact that you have Davis Schneider playing tomorrow because, of course, Valdez, the lefty, will be in. 
and and you know we'll probably try to get as many right-handed bats in there as possible and and davis eats lefties so hopefully we'll get him in there and uh you know he can he can roll a little bit and get you that over the bases um yeah i don't know carter do you, what, what's what's your thoughts on tomorrow's game do you honestly think that uh, the blue Jays are gonna pull this one out well, I hope so for my bet slip at minimum yeah. and for yeah. maybe my little bit of my mental health here after uh, the first game that I had to watch of this series. Yeah, I mean, we need we need a bounce back for sure. I think this is a very important game because, yeah, I mean, Christian Javier, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough pitching matchup that we have against uh, this Astros team so far. And then the lineup's obviously very good as well. I'm, I, we need a bounce back game, though. I, I don't think uh, we can get smacked by the, the Astros twice in a row, and I can feel pretty happy about it. So... Just uh, for all the Blue Jays fans' uh, morale here, I think we need uh, hopefully some home runs. Hopefully we can get uh, some manufacturing off some runs here. I do have the under, so I think it's going to be a little bit of a barn burner. But I I have uh, I have Vladdy with the home run, obviously. I think that's going to be a major part of the game. And I just have uh, just a bounce back completely from this pitching staff. I think Jose Barrios is going to have another great game. But the Blue Jays in this, uh, a spot where they have a chance to win again. Maybe we see Yimmy Garcia. I haven't seen him much this season. That would be another nice matchup against the Astros lineup. Uh, but the player I'm looking for is Vladdy. I think Vladdy has got to ignite these guys a little bit with Boba Shett being out. It's the only superstar we really have left, unless you want to throw George Springer in there. This year he's been playing like a superstar, so I guess you could definitely make that argument. But yeah, I'm, I'm all in on Vladdy for this game. We need a Vladdy launch. Yeah, you know what? I was actually going to go with uh, Springer launch. I think he's seen the ball really well, uh, obviously with the walks today and just you know adding to everything that he's done before. I think that... He's going to be a big piece tomorrow as well. But of course, uh, if you look back at uh, last episode, I took a Blue Jays uh, two to one series victory and I had these next two games as the games they win. So I'm obviously riding that uh, streak pretty hard. I hope I keep it going. I think I'm what four and two now with the correct predictions because I predicted, I think I ended up getting one game wrong and then I got the series in totality wrong. I said three and one and it ended up being two and two. So I'm four and two. What are you at right now sitting for uh, series predictions? Uh, I got the first game right, and then I think I got the next two wrong. And I just realized now that I'm – I know on my series predictions, I had the Jays losing this game, but I don't really care. I think after this uh, – this this just complete dismemberment we had of this game and just how yeah. bad it was, I think we need a Jays win. I think they're going to come with vengeance. I think it's going to be the same thing as the Astros did with the Yankees. Got absolutely destroyed in their game, and then beat up on the Jays. Hopefully, we could do that again. And hopefully, my series prediction can be wrong so the Blue Jays can win and my bet slip can be correct. That's right. Um, obviously, yeah, it's going to be an interesting next couple of days. Obviously, uh, off day on th- what would that be? Thursday, I guess. Thursday off day it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to yeah. get sorry. One more thing before uh, we head out here. I know we yeah. referenced it a little bit on the podcast yesterday, but Justin Turner at third base. Can we, can we be done with this? Like, I, I don't yeah. want to see this ever again. I was watching a little bit of his highlights again, just uh, from this first week of his his his, his playing. And some of his throws were just horrendous. Like, what, no, what are we it, doing with Justin Turner? Uh, in there's the no need. There's no need. If if there's a situation where we want to get Turner in, throw him at two. And if, like, say you want to get Turner in, you want Votto to be as the DH maybe for a game or something, throw him at two. He doesn't need to be throwing across the diamond. If he's going to have those plays, he's got I think I think two is the only position that he really is going to have anything at. Because I, I can't really see him even taking a ton of games at one. So... I think you're looking for him at two, if anything. Uh, other than that, stick keep him with at the DH and just don't bother. He doesn't need to be in the field. Uh, but we will see. It, it'll be interesting. It was, you know, I, I know I think you had a TikTok rare to go, but then, you know, today's shellacking happened. So uh, yeah, then I had to make mine. But a little bit more priority needed uh, on a no hit Blue Jays game than uh, what I had going. But we're definitely going to get that one out because I think it's funny. I think the fans it, it will was like funny. It. Yeah, but, uh, it, it, was, one- it was good. I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. Uh, we have noticed that around 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. So if you guys are watching the content, are always coming back and riding with us on our True Auto Blue Jays baseball, we would appreciate the subscription. It's free. Helps us out a ton. We always appreciate the support. Uh, we have been posting a lot on – I have been. I know I've been active on X. I know throughout the Blue Jays games, but along the, uh, the mom- emotional roller coaster of this Blue Jays is – team is taking me on i know brayden's had a couple tweets as well we've been heavy on the tiktok i've been doing a lot of the blue jays game recaps no brain had a tiktok they set up today so if you guys want to check that out we have our tiktok link in the description our twitters are carter first two is mine and brayden five velocity is brayden's 
Uh, and just before we headed out, I wanted to bring up our Locked On 24-7 streaming channel one more time. You guys already know about all the sports leagues going on. It's a great time to be a sports fan. So if you guys want to see our expert analysis, just go to the Locked On Sports Today channel on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. Braden, do you have anything else to add? You know what? I am just hoping that we get a bounce back because, yeah, like you said, my mental health can't take this. If this is how I'm going to start my week, I'm not going to be too pleased. I've got, you know, I got some mornings coming up. So, you know, I I'm get off in time where I can sit down and actually watch games. So watching some wins would be great and not, you know, sitting here for two and a half hours wanting to jam my own eyeballs out would be just amazing. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. We will be back tomorrow, hopefully with a better result. But, you know, yeah, only time will tell. Hopefully we're a little bit more fired up. Hopefully we have some more positives to talk about, talk about other than uh, IKF pitching the best on the Jays out of all the relievers. Hopefully hopefully it gets better. It, it can't get any worse, right? No, no. We're at, we're at the bottom of the barrel right now. It's only up from here. We'll see you guys tomorrow.